Hiding from Baba Yaga was more a poetical journey for me, along one of the biggest rivers on earth, which flows from the Mongolian border northwards for all Siberia into the Arctic Ocean. Many motives I just would find while I was already there, or many people I would just encounter randomly and approaching them and asking them if I could photograph them or if I could spend time with them. Yeah, that's how I met like really interesting characters along my journey. One person I met was Yuri. I always just saw there was a landfill and I saw some little huts with some flags up there. So after I finally found some way to drive up there, I asked him like, I had the feeling some pirate lives here. And he's like, no, I'm not a pirate. I'm like a simple worker. But Yuri like kind of like built his own paradise up there. Everything he found for his house, he found on the landfill. So everything is like covered by carpets. Everything is like really decorated with so much love. And he said like he left the city because like nothing kept him there anymore because all his friends live on the cemetery now because they died of drugs or of alcohol. Another person I really fell in love with is Vasilisa. She's a girl who lives in the village of all believers, a village where people live after century old beliefs really strict with prayers and trying to avoid Western influences. And she, she and her family, they are the only heathens in this village. So she says so she always feels kind of isolated in this place. Like she doesn't like the other children of the other old believers. And her only friend is a girl in the village Sisim. And in summer holidays, they can see each other. So because uh, the Yenisei River, as well as the long walk, separates them from each other. So what she told me, like, when they will see again, they will be, like, holding hands all the time and walk all day together. But, like, after some time and meeting all these people, I had the feeling like all these people have something in common with. It's like, on the one hand, it's like their seek of freedom to be on their own. On the other hand, it's also like, yeah, like this kind of imprisonment, their broken dreams or unfulfilled dreams. Yeah, and this isolation, which gives, like one hand the Yenisei River gives such a space for freedom and you can hide in the woods. On the other hand, like many live in this isolation, in this loneliness, in this unfulfilled dream. So it's kind of contradictory.